Hey, -o, this is Ham the Guinness Gamer here bringing you my next PAX Day video. I thought I'd take this opportunity with the upcoming wipe on the 5th of November to actually just do a walkthrough of our base and what we've been working on for the last four months, more or less. Uh, most of it has done, been done by me and one of our guild mates, Funky Blue. So uh, the only, we're the only two that are still actively playing the game, probably because we're the only two that were fully engaged with the building system. Before I get into that though, I'd be grateful if you'd give me a subscribe, a like, any comments to make down below, blah blah blah, if, you, if you've enjoyed this video of course, but for now we'll get straight into it. But yeah, just thought I would run through it quite quickly, this is everything you can see on the screen right now is what we've built. I'll start to run up from the bottom ramp here, so we've got, we're built on a mountain, on a cliff as you can see, so we have access to both the top of the cliff and the bottom of the cliff. Um, now, this is a relatively recent building that we've built that is super pretty and done by Funky Blues um, exclusively. Uh, it doesn't have anything in it right now. We hadn't actually found a use for it. Uh, I was probably going to put some storage boxes and some low-level crafting items in it just to, to craft resources that we got from the lower, uh, the lower region out there. Um, like... Uh, spinning wheels and things like that because there's a lot of flax out the front there but I haven't quite got round to doing that and I am not going to get it done before uh, before the wipe but it does look super pretty um, not too annoyed that the wipe's coming even though we haven't finished our base purely because we are being given uh, all our resources back so me and Funky between the two of us will probably be able to rebuild quite quickly and we will rebuild better some of this is very very pretty and um, but some of them we both kind of made mistakes and learning along the way while building and sometimes you just could not be arsed changing what you built um, because you, you run into a mistake with the roof maybe but you put in art of work built and all the all the walls and stuff underneath so in, in that case that happened me once or twice I just decided to leave it and um, so here is a bit of a, a rampart I think you would call it a bit of a t small tower anyway that Funky had built to lean down over and um, because of the nature of the game and it missing a lot of content we spent a good bit of effort uh, just making things that looked nice to us really you know building the walls and stuff to keep invisible or invented enemies out you know enemies that didn't exist not like we're ever being raided or anything like that but um just just for funsies with plans to build a church and things like that just because why not because we both like building um but for now this uh this ramp here this uh yeah the stairs up is one of the first things that were built just to get us up from the bottom down there up to the top up here now underneath this was all uh, all very very jagged cliffs and stuff like that so we had to build in a certain direction as you can see coming up there definitely not straight and round in a circle just to get on top of the cliffs uh, here's a nice wee nice wee house for somebody that was built um, into the cliffside as well like a like a house in Hobbiton again a couple up here a couple of wee minor ones, tiny ones that one and this one it yeah, wasn't fully fleshed out either but a nice view down over the valley from this if you do if you, if you don't mind a bit of breeze coming from the wind so on up yeah, a couple more houses with with not too much in them a couple of storage box storage boxes here and there for people to use if if they'd ever returned to the game they would have used another uh, the way to use the houses I'm sure and um, another one here with a couple of wee benches some nice lights again most of what we're looking at is actually built by Funky so far and um, this was our dump storage chest area and still is used for that for resources that didn't have a, a home um, elsewhere originally that was much much bigger that was our first storage area and we put everything there and then as we uh, as we progressed up the stairs um, and built the likes of the tavern and the uh, tailoring place and stuff then all those resources that belong to those places ended up in those individual buildings again this is just another house here we small house built into the into the cliffside again all very pretty now this is the first day uh, first crafting place that you come across this was the building we built as you can tell by the looms outside the building we built for um, leather working and tailoring now what I will say is once it started, Fun Funky built the, the shell of it and I sort of filled out the inside of it. And um, Once it came to me filling out the inside of it, you kind of realised how many boxes you need for each of them. So when we come back next time, uh, rebuilding, we might have uh, leather working and tailoring in separate buildings because this whole bottom floor is all tailoring. And um, I spent time working out a bit of a 
organization system for all the tailor and stuff on this side here those are the the raw mats here for uh, flax on the bottom row uh, what's the middle row wool in the middle row and then cotton on the top row and again these two here these three here are also just the raw materials and then running from left to right you have the tier one string tier two string tier three string tier four string for each of them so bottom you know bottom row as I say, this one has flax in it. So bottom row, this is all flax string, those bottom four. And then those middle four, they're all uh, wool string coming from that, um, the wool boxes. And then the top one's cotton string coming from the cotton boxes. And then around the other side, of course, is the exact same thing, except for cloth tier one. Let's see if I can get the camera angle right here. Tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four. Now, at some point, Paxdai glitched and they removed the extra signs that I had on these right hand six boxes for some reason but there was three signs in those, on those three and then four signs on those three as well and um, so again bottom bottom row is the same as the string bottom row is flax middle row is wool and uh, we're talking cloths here top row is cotton cloths which obviously there is none in that box where's cotton cloth that was as good as I could come up with, but I could really, really do with more signs and probably more storage solutions, but I'll, I'll get to that in another video. Um, you know, the likes of weapon racks for weapons and things like that, as opposed to putting absolutely everything into boxes and then you take it up an insane amount of space store and stuff. And then these three boxes in the back corner, these are just random boxes. These are overflow ones for any of the, uh, any of the boxes that end up full. You run out here then, we have all of our, our looms just out, out getting nice air and that's the whole tailoring area explored and here's here's your benches then your your tailoring table and your uh, your spinning wheel then for the, the uh, crafting element of course and you're on up the stairs and you've got something similar albeit a good bit smaller for the leather working all your tannin racks over here your couple of random overflow boxes and then here's tier one tier two tier three of leather on the left is leather leather bands on the right is leather string then um rough leather string in that one and then normal leather string in that one if we have any yeah and the basic leather string in the bottom one and same again of course here for the hides then so that's the raw hide boxes and then these three are the generic leather boxes and of course over here then is the raw the hide, sorry, what did I say? Those are the leather boxes. Those are the hides. Uh, no, those are the processed leather boxes. Yeah, sorry, it's been a while from done a bit of leather working. Um, and these are the raw hide boxes. So you see this one will be full of orange. Well, not full, but orange hides. This one has all the gray hides. And once they're processed, they'll go into these boxes as the large hides. And then you use the leather working table to bring them, to process them into the leathers and then put the leathers in here. Seems a bit more complicated when I'm saying it out loud, but you get you get pretty used to it. And here's a random tannin rack just in case we needed one more. Uh, but you get used to the system once you once you use it, and it's as good as I could come up with. But uh, as it seems very intuitive to me, it probably doesn't seem intuitive to anybody else. It just kind of follows my train of thought without uh, <laughs> without probably being too yeah too naturally intuitive for other people. So just some temporary storage out here because we were building. This was a uh, one of the pieces that was still being built um there's this nice tower with a nice fence and a nice overlook down over the valley this isn't even the highest part we have but uh you can see that big tower up there is the highest part we have but um again funky was just adding some nice nice places to to sit and chill really they don't all have to have a use in game this building as i say yeah this is the tailoring and the leather working building so it obviously does have a use but a lot of other things were built are just purely for aesthetics now, running up those stairs brings us up then to the blacksmithing area that he's been working on very recently. Um, and you run in here and it's got all the typical blacksmith stuff. Now, all the tables are in here at the minute. I haven't quite moved the storage in here yet. Again, not going to be done now, now that we know about the wipe. But um, we'll build back bigger and stronger next time. Here's all your weaponsmith, your armor smith, your blacksmith uh, benches, and then your... Uh, your forge there and then out back here then is the big the big furnace which he's built in nicely into the walls and then out here then is all the small small charcoal kilns the furnace there sticking up out of the out of the roof i think it looks pretty good Um, we both like it, it they haven't made it easy but we look both like the idea of having the chimney you know naturally not covered at the top you know pushing protruding out through the roof and and logically getting rid of the smoke as opposed to um you know 
you can block it in at the top of course it won't change how it works or anything like that but we don't like the we're, we're a bit of bit of role playing in us we don't like how that uh Hey, that wouldn't work for us so this is an interesting window to get at it maybe maybe to do rec repair works or something to the chimney if we need it so up here yeah, there's not much storage up here it's just looking nice and i hadn't quite got around to to filling it with with blacksmithing supplies same with down here like ultimately we would have had um boxes in here and upstairs to hold all of the blacksmithing supplies and probably have um the ores and stuff in boxes out uh well, out the front, I suppose, the charcoal boxes and wood boxes out the back here for the charcoal kilns, and then uh, the ore boxes out the front here as we have the smaller uh, smaller furnaces out here for use, and a couple of nice tables just because why not. With no chairs at them, you'll see that uh, that's quite common. We've made a lot of chairs, but we haven't made any of the really nice ones, so I haven't placed any of the chairs yet. <laughs> just benches and tables so far, other than that one there, of course. Um. So yeah, just run out here then. These are all kind of aesthetic pieces. We talked about having a bit of a market here. We haven't fully finished it again, but we thought this is a very central area of the base. And um, you kind of run through this area when you're coming, you know, coming up the stairs, you have to, you come up the stairs, that's from downstairs area, you come up there and either you drop into the tailoring house maybe, or and then you come up here, no matter where you're going next, you have to come up here. So we thought that would be nice for a wee marketplace or something, you know, and then you run out to the blacksmith there. Next place you could run to that I'll go to now is going up to the tavern, which is around here. I had built this tavern, so I have an mostly completed it but just never got to the the finishing touches all of this wall of boxes out here is where we store our food and again similar to the tailoring um place earlier i'm trying to use a bit of a tier system by the amount of signs that i have so the all the boxes at the bottom here you'll see it has one one heart and one food out one food sign and the heart the heart's for me meant health and like yeah, health points so the three on the right the three on the far that's right there and um, they are the best health giving uh foods so that's total health points as opposed to health regeneration so then these three are the health regeneration ones and the one heart two heart three heart uh, designates the tears and again then same again here for these drinks except the wagon wheel for me meant stamina meant going fast so stamina again tier three tier three two one two one two three so one uh, one row being the row on the right being just outright stamina and the one on the left there being uh, stamina regeneration and then you run through the rest of these the, these are all defensive ones so the fire means and, and hence why that i put the shield on them um probably only makes sense again seems intuitive to me but probably only makes sense to anybody looking at it uh, when i explain it but the fire meant resistance then to to fire obviously and again tier three two one so the best stuff is always in the top top box and um, that potion thing is resistant to poison that ice thing is resistant to ice the bow means resistant to piercing, the sword means resistant to slash, and then the the tools means resistant to blunt. And I did need to put in one more row then for resistance to mental. I just hadn't got round to that yet for the wines that I've made recently. Um, so yeah, that's as, as good as I can come up with with what we have, just using boxes and, and various, uh, various signage. But could do with probably more options to make that a wee bit more obvious for somebody coming up here without seeing me explaining to it. I would like them to be able to understand it. I don't think any randomer is going to come up here and understand this, to be honest, without me explaining it. But anyway, that's where all the storage is for the food because all of the food making is in this tavern building. Now, not quite finished, as I say, but it was pretty close to it. Around the left here was the bacon and the brewing area. So here's the the barrels and a few different boxes with different uh, ingredients in it. Um, and the distillery there, then the, the bacon oven here, the bread oven. And again, more boxes. All the boxes have a use. This is where I put all the the oats and the rye and stuff. Um, and then up the stairs, in around the left here, just behind, is the the flower boxes and the windmill and a wee tiny uh, millstone behind it. It's quite ridiculous that the millstone does the exact same that the windmill does, but I have the windmill there for purely for aesthetics, really. I'm sitting up above, looking out over the majority of our base and able to catch wind where it is i do believe back down here then you see this bridge here but i'll come back up around to that and um, back down here then is the uh, 
cooking area and again ridiculous amount of boxes for all the meat hence the way I have a wee ham shank sign there and again tier one two three um designated by the signs bottom row was all boom, 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 boar meat middle row was all deer meat and then top row was all wolf and and uh, bear meat and then your charcuterie table here some extra meat boxes a random box for overflow your cooking box more more boxes because we need boxes everywhere to store everything that we have and then your spit roast and your big uh, your big craftsman cooking hearth and then again more storage here for different foods and berries and things like that and around here is all the mushrooms and such now similar to the forge uh, when I was building this I had to build a proper chimney for the smoke of <laughs> the cooking hearth to go out there's no reason to other than the fact that um kind of role playing and i'm really weird about these things so i have to have <laughs> i have to have a chimney above it don't want to be smoked out when i'm chopping meat like i have a wee sneaky hole in built into the wall out here i don't have enough lights in it yet but it was something i was working on again haven't uh, haven't completed it but the idea was it was going to bring you out into a tunnel into the back of the basin where this will bring us out currently is into the back of the windmill um, but I had plans then to have that sneaky tunnel run through the whole wall. I haven't zoomed out and shown the wall yet, but the wall goes the whole way around the base. Again, not quite completed. So that's a, a sneaky tunnel under the wall. But if I run down here then, this was going to be like the, the actual tavern, the eating and drinking area. Again, loads of tables, not too many seats. But uh, I was going to get working on more seats. But of course, it's on the long finger with the other 20 tasks that I'd set for myself. Uh, and one solo drinking horn. That is, of course, for me. But ultimately, you would want to have 50 of them out there. Even though there's only like 10 or 12 people in our clan at its peak. Um, don't think they're all playing at the same time either. But... Uh, still, you know, you have all this space, you might as well put out a shitload of, uh, shitload of tables, shitload of chairs, and then loads of drinking horns. So this is a nice little view again, down over the valley from here, um, and down over the rest of the base. And this was, uh, this was supposed to be the chill area, although let's be honest, there would be a hell of a lot of wind coming through here <laughs> with how high we are, and the fact that I haven't built walls on half of it, more than half of it. So again, you sneak out here through another gap in the wall, and you see that I was trying to actually create uh, an entrance onto the top of our wall from our tavern. So this goes up, this part wasn't done yet, these stairs were just temporary. But the idea was to bring us out then onto this um, this full wall that goes around the circuit of our base. Now I've done this part, this part's almost complete except it just needs a slight wall on the inside to stop you falling off it. But then you run around um, and I of course would plan to put more uh, crenellations along this bit and stuff just hadn't got around to it. And extending the wall around and then we run around it and this will bring us across the top of our gate. So there's like a postern gate back there actually. I probably showed a snippet of it but didn't mention it. Um, down there you can see it um, where my mouse is pointing now. There's a couple of a uh, couple of sconces above it. That's just a wee tiny gate to run out through and you can even though the, the terrain's a bit janky out there but you can run up it and get up on the top of that hill and then it's like a sneaky way way out of our base. We way in and out of our base. Um, from the tavern so you can run into the tavern get buffed up on food and then head out back and that'll bring you down into the wilderness area so it will to get some uh, well it actually brings you down towards to get the wilderness to get the wrought iron but it's also the way we would go to get to uh, lioness which is pretty nice then what I'm running over the top of here at the minute was the main gate and it's sort of underneath us there again it wasn't completed but um, was was underway um, I, I sort of jump from project to project to keep me, myself interested. Uh, there's things, a lot of things that I have, uh, I haven't really finished. Like this wall was me, and that tavern was me. I built both of them, and f a lot of the things that Funky built, he actually finished, which is great. But you know, I was intending on finishing them. Just uh, will take longer now with the wipe. So I built this as well. This is our our massive round tower, which you can see from all across the base. And again, huge views going down across the valley from here, which is pretty nice. It is a very pretty game. Like, um, you're looking down over that. It'd be interesting to see how they change this whole area because I have the whole place basically imprinted in my mind now with the amount that I've been running about it. But um, 
can see across the way there's somebody else building a big big tower like structure he uh, was building that from fairly early on in early access and then we we had a neighbor who, who wasn't very nice who uh who built right on top of us we we've been built here from day one and he put a plot basically right beside our plots to sh stop us expanding that way but i see he has been inactive for quite a while because he never finished anything himself and um, so that's not what we're looking at now that is not ours but this big uh, <laughs> this big tower and this big wall made sure to keep him out <laughs> So um, if I run back down this tower then, what this does is there's another sneaky wee path into, again it's not well lit enough, I'd plan to come back and put sconces in, but there's enough to get through. And this will bring us down into the bottom floor of the tower, so you see up there is where we just were, but this is the, the ground floor basically of the tower, and this is our armory, this is where all the weapons are. Um, oh, what do we have here, this is all our swords and spears and such and there's our shields and then this is all the archery stuff arrows and bows and then over here then it's different different types of armor and um, so that's armors on that side and then these nine here are weapons and then this is just an overflow i think or uh, lanterns actually in there so i have this campfire here i mean it doesn't match at all but it's the only way i could get proper light i'm sure if you've played it you'll have realized that there's a whole lot of messing about with with light when you don't have a door you know you, you <laughs> I was joking a couple of months ago with my clan mates and it's true I actually put shutters on the black the original blacksmith that I built because it increased the light in it when you close the shutters which makes no sense so you get glare off this door off this doorway uh, and it actually stops you from being able to see a lot of the boxes so I had to put this campfire then to enable us to to actually see the boxes and yes i'm sure you are thinking it look at the smoke and it's got nowhere to go and yes that does annoy me but we need the light so <laughs> i put these sconces on and the sconces add a bit but because obviously they're so high and stuff and they're above the boxes you still couldn't really see the boxes also interestingly all those sconces you can see them through the stone from outside at night time you can't see them right now but uh, it's a bit silly but here we are uh, so down the bottom of this tower, there's nothing really around here, I was just going to extend this wall, that massive wall there, just around this side until the edge. And then you've brought, this brings us back round to the top of the blacksmith there, because you see that tower coming out. All of this that we look at now was obviously underway, a lot of boxes, a lot of those are still the blacksmith boxes that weren't moved down into the blacksmith, because it's relatively recently built. And um, the killing and things like that, you know, ultimately we discussed about having... A church or something here in this massive space just because we, we don't need any more crafting buildings so we're just filling it with like role playing buildings and what's down here is I had planned to put my personal house here and the reason for that is that I've built wee, more wee tunnels into our wall and again not well lit at all because I haven't got around to that part but uh, this then would bring you out to the main entrance out into the wildlands, the main entrance to the top part of our base, and again this one here I built, I'm pretty sure I can still get through this one, but I uh, just need to get the light popping in, and then this will run us round, oh is there a way out? <laughs> uh, yeah this just runs you around the inside of the wall, so I haven't, uh, this will bring you back up then to the windmill, so again not completed, but I was intent on curtain in that wall the whole way inside up there and then that would run you through from the main entrance up to the back of the windmill and into that entrance that I come out of earlier and um, into the tavern which I will definitely it's just a wee personal project of mine but I'm definitely doing it when we're rebuilding the base I'm definitely going to have a whole curtain wall around the base at least the top part of the base where you can run both on top of the wall and underneath the wall and I may be the only one that uses it, it may actually be slower running through it than running through the rest of the base, but I don't care, it's just purely for fun that I'm, that I'm building it. Last area then that I haven't uh, talked about, because we haven't really done much with it then, is there was going to be an alchemy building here as well, just into this wee outshot, into this corner. I figure the alchemy building beside the tavern near exits of the base would be pretty good, because you can load up on potions, load up on food, and then away you go. Um, so it was going to be just underneath that uh, that windmill and again this whole this whole wall here was going to be curtained off so you can't actually access it from here or anything maybe maybe we back entrance in the um alchemy building here or something but i hadn't hadn't got that far thinking of that so what's that that's the tavern that's a whole curtain wall um 
Just some whales up here. These were temporary. I do also want whales to be on grass, but they look terrible. I couldn't work out where to put them, so they're there temporarily. And now I'll not have to de deal with that problem, thankfully. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a church here, probably a house there. That's the tower, the armory tower. Then you're on back down these steps and you get back towards the, the marketplace that again is very central and probably ultimately have boxes here for, for overflow items for people, you know, open public boxes or whatever. And that's Smithy out there. We've got some pretty buildings. We've got the, the tailor and then back down the stairs to to where we came from. So yes, the only thing I didn't do is actually run out um, run out the main gate and just show it just brings you up onto wilderness territory or not maybe I'll just get stuck permanently and um, just brings you out onto wilderness territory and some some fairly fairly strong enemies hit you immediately as soon as you go out here so I'm not going to show you a clip of me dying but you just run out here and, and, and on you go on your on your merry way and the walls are big enough now they're high enough where if somebody were to attack, which obviously doesn't happen, um, they wouldn't be getting in. Although, there's probably probably a requirement for some kind of gate here. That would be nice if they brought in those built-in pieces. Um, because the only kind of doorway we can create is a short doorway about this size. And that would look ridiculous. So right now it's just staying open and will probably be open for a long time until new built-in pieces come out. So that's the full walkthrough. Um, if you see, it's quite big. There's a hell of a lot of resources went into it, and a good bit of effort, uh, and a hell of a lot of time. But thankfully, as I say, the uh, the wipe, the update coming on the fifth of November, is going to give us all of our resources back, as long as they are on our plots, of course. Um, so next thing we're gonna do between now and maybe this time next week is start folding everything down thankfully the central four plots i believe of the base are mine so not everything will need collapse but a, a lot we probably will collapse everything and just put it down into boxes just to make sure between my plots and funky's plots just to make sure we get all our resources and i would recommend you do the same thing too because i imagine there being issues you know that they said about I've answered a question in their facts about if a if a building piece is put, you know, partly on one plot and partly on the other plot, you know, they'll choose the plot that the centre of the building piece is in. But to be honest, I wouldn't be taking that risk if you have a piece that is half on your plot or you think it's half on your plot and it's half on somebody else's plot and then you don't get it back. I would say you just have yourself to blame. I would say just square out your your one, your two, your four plots, whatever you can have, and stack as many chests as you can in it, and then just take everything else down and fill the chests as much as you can. And if you need to, just build high, build a... There's enough room in a plot probably to build a square platform that you can build stairs in so that you can put boxes on the, you know, on the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor, and just keep building higher and higher until you have enough boxes to take all your shit because there's a lot of effort in this game to grind and they've obviously done the smart thing you know i get why they need to wipe it's early access and they said there'd be wipes and that's fine they've done the smart thing by allowing us to keep our items because if we lost all of this uh items wise i think we probably wouldn't play early access again and i'd say a lot of people would be the same if you if you've a decent sized base that you've put a lot of effort in and um, this is just another wee tower that uh, tower top that we ha I haven't actually shown you yet again nice views and probably would ultimately have had uh, some seats and whatnot here and you're just under the tavern so might have might ultimately put some steps down from the tavern or something like that that's the tavern's uh, balcony that i didn't actually show either um around the front of the tavern when you run up here this would all be the social area as well as the part above with the, that actually has the tables this was going to be oh Somebody stole my floor. This would kind of be the, you know, a bit of a balcony. Um, ultimately, again, purely for an aesthetic point of view, I was actually going to put beams down, you know, from here because it looks a bit ridiculous. Obviously, it doesn't need beams to support it because it's holding, but just beams out to make it look a bit more sensible. But as I say, I, I hardly f uh, finish anything, so why break the habit of a lifetime? But, um, yeah, sorry, I was saying just about the... Uh, yeah, thankfully the devs have have shown a lot of common sense and said we need to give people their materials back because 
in a game that kind of has two working systems in, in crafting and building, people that have been playing it are going to have been doing a hell of a lot of building. And there'll be bases much bigger than this one. And um, with on plots, you know, with a lot more plots than this one. With a whole lot of resources. So, thankfully we're getting those back. Hopefully, the update will bring a number of people back. Um, including our clan members and a lot of other people. Um, just in general, the game's obviously been a bit dead for a couple of months without uh, the early access been a bit dead, should I say, for a couple of months without meaningful a meaningful update. But this one sounds like it'll have a lot, and it'll certainly be worth trying if anybody has that kind of interest. But to so say this was a, a walkthrough of the bit of the of the base, I did not expect it to take thirty minutes. I'm not gonna lie, or close to it by the time I have this cut down. But um. I hope you've enjoyed it. I will put out more content soon about professions and such in Pax Day. I just thought I would get this one out before we start destroying everything. So, I hope you've liked this video. I'd be grateful if you uh, if you want to give me any comments down below or a, a subscribe would be appreciated. Um, and a like of course always. But wherever you are, goodbye and good luck.